Good evening and welcome to Courts Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chahan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. Starting with the judgment delivered today on Chandra Babu Naidu's plea for quashing of the FIR in the skill development scam case. The former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister was arrested in September last year in connection with this case by the state CID. He was in custody till he was first granted interim medical bail and then regular bail by the Andhra Pradesh High Court. Naidu had contended that sanction to prosecute him was not obtained by the prosecution as required under Section 17A of the Prevention of Corruption Act. But the High Court dismissed the petition, which he then challenged before the Apex Court. The main contention of the state, represented by senior advocate Mukul Rohtagi, was that since the offence occurred before insertion of Section 17A in the PC Act through the 2018 amendment, prior sanction was not applicable in the case. Today, a split verdict was delivered by the bench comprising Justice Anirudh Bose and Justice Bela M. Trivedi. Justice Bose said that under Section 17A, obtaining prior sanction is mandatory after the provision became operational. He held that Naidu could not be pursued due to the absence of the prior approval. He clarified that state could now apply and obtain an approval order. Justice Trivedi disagreed on the interpretation of Section 17A. She held that this provision could not be made applicable retrospectively. That is, the provision for need for a sanction will only apply to amended and newly inserted offences under the PC Act in 2018. And that here the same was not required. She said that the lack of prior approval before investigation into an alleged corruption offence by a public servant cannot be a basis for quashing an FIR. And especially when the public servant faces additional charges under the IPC related to the same set of allegations. In view of the split verdict, the matter will now be referred to a larger bench. In an important update, the Supreme Court today stayed Allahabad High Court's order appointing Commissioner to inspect Shahi Idgah Mosque in Mathura in the Krishna Janbhumi case. The controversy is related to Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb era Shahi Idgah Mosque, which is alleged to have been built after demolishing a temple at the birthplace of Lord Krishna. Several suits for declaration, injunction and the right to worship at the site as well as for removal of the structure are pending before the Allahabad High Court. Today, a bench comprising Justices Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta passed the interim order while issuing notice on the special leave petition filed by the Mosque Committee against the order of the Allahabad High Court by which it had allowed an application for appointment of a court commissioner to inspect the mosque. Advocate Tasneem Ahmadi, representing the Mosque Committee, argued that the High Court could not have passed the order as an application to reject the suit under Places of Worship Act 1991 is still pending. Citing the recent judgment in Asma Latif versus Shabir Ahmad, she emphasized the need for the trial court to at least prima facie decide on jurisdiction before granting interim relief when the suit's maintainability is challenged. The bench acknowledged the validity of this legal argument and expressed reservations about the manner in which the commission application was filed. The bench has issued notice on the petition returnable on 23rd January this year. The Supreme Court has today stayed the criminal defamation proceedings pending against Aam Admi Party MP Sanjay Singh over alleged derogatory remarks made by him against Gujarat University in connection with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's academic degree. Refusing to entertain Singh's plea to transfer the case out of Gujarat at the present stage, the bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and Sandeep Mehta left the question of grant of interim relief to be considered by the Gujarat High Court within four weeks. Till such time, the defamation case before the trial court has been stayed. The case has arisen from a complaint filed by Gujarat University concerning alleged remarks made by Singh and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal regarding Prime Minister Narendra Modi's academic degree. The complaint asserted that Aam Admi Party leaders had made sarcastic and defamatory statements during press conferences and on their Twitter handles targeting the university in connection with PM Modi's degree. Subsequently, Kejriwal and Singh were summoned by a magistrate court in Gujarat. 
In April last year, both for Prime FSI found to have targeted the Gujarat University. A review petition filed by them against issuance of summons was rejected by the Sessions Court at Ahmedabad in September. And now let me tell you, a Chief Justice of India-led committee today interviewed 200 out of 282 lawyers applying for senior designation. The process follows modified guidelines established by the judgment in Indra Jai Singh v. Supreme Court of India, which was delivered last year. Last July, the Supreme Court had asked applicants to reapply under the updated guidelines. The committee, including two senior most judges of the Supreme Court, the Attorney General for India and a nominated bar member, will handle senior designations. Shortlisted names will be presented to the full court without secret voting as ordered in the Indira Jai Singh judgment, save in as exceptional situations for reasons to be recorded. Changes also include reduced marks for publications and increased points for judgments and pro bono work. The Supreme Court today granted permission for cleaning of the Vazukhana, that is the water tank, at the Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi. You know that the mosque has been in news due to an application filed by the Hindu plaintiffs who seek right to worship the deities in the mosque premises. The Supreme Court today allowed the cleaning of the tank after the plaintiffs sought cleaning, citing presence of dead fish inside it. The application was not opposed by the Mosque Management Committee, which stated that it had filed a similar application before the Varanasi District Collector. A bench comprising CJI Chandrachud, Justice J.B. Pardewala and Justice Manoj Mishra allowed the application and directed that the cleaning should be carried out under supervision of Varanasi District Collector. In 2022, the Supreme Court had ordered to seal the Vazukhana after a shivling was claimed to have been found there. The court, however, clarified that the order would not obstruct right of Muslim devotees to perform religious observances. Last year, the Supreme Court had allowed an ASI survey of the mosque premises, which the plaintiffs sought to ascertain if the mosque was built over a pre-existing temple or not. The Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission in Ernakulam has ordered a bakery to compensate an affected family with 50,000 rupees following a case of food poisoning caused by the consumption of its food items. The complainant family, having suffered symptoms like loose motion, abdominal pain and vomiting after consuming bakery items, sought redress for mental distress and financial losses due to unsafe food. The Consumer Forum found that the Food Safety and Health Authority had ordered a penalty to the bakery for violation of safety standards based on the complaint preferred by the family. It also referred to the report of Assistant Food Safety Officer, which showed that the bakery did not produce a license that was issued by the FSSAI during the time of inspection. It also stated that the bakery items were stored in open areas with insects and rats and were covered using newspapers in an unhygienic manner. The Consumer Forum found deficiency of service and unfair trade practices on the part of the bakery and ordered it to compensate the family. In another update, the Delhi High Court today restrained Pakistani-American rapper and singer Bohemia from engaging with third parties for making any sound recordings or musical works without prior written approval of the Punjab-based company Saga Music Private Limited. It was the music company's case that Bohemia and other music producers violated the terms and conditions of the agreement entered between it and the singer as the songs were produced with third parties, which was not permitted. That the terms of the agreement stated that Bohemia would engage exclusively with Saga Music for 45 months and will not during that time perform for other music producers throughout the world. Senior advocate Kapil Sibyl appearing for Saga Music submitted that Bohemia failed to abide by the terms and conditions of the agreement and also failed to make any performance for the music company despite advance payment. Saying that a prima facie case was made out in favour of Saga Music, Justice Anish Dayal granted the ad interim relief and restrained Bohemia and his agents from posting any defamatory posts on social media platforms against the music company. The matter has been posted to 23rd February for further hearing. And lastly, the Kerala High Court has agreed to review a contentious scene from the Malayalam movie Antony, where allegedly a gun is depicted inside a Bible causing offence to the Christian community. 
However, the court said that people should not be overly intolerant, highlighting that similar scenes were portrayed in English movies as early as the 1960s and 1970s. The bench questioned the intolerance towards passing reference to a book emphasizing that the movie underwent censorship by experts before its release on various platforms. The court also questioned the characterization of the book as the Bible, considering it was just a brief shot. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.